if it's not about love, it's not about Jesus. Welcome to St. Paul's on YouTube channel on All Saints Sunday. I'm Father Andrew, the rector of this parish, and I'm glad you are here with me. The lesson appointed for today is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, also known as the Beatitude. As always, all the lessons are available from lectionarypage.net, but be sure to check the video description below for our November edition of the Good News and the lessons and the prayer list. But first, let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. As a parish priest, my responsibility is to celebrate people's lives from the moment of birth to the end of life and some significant life events in between. Of all these special life events we celebrate, I have sent off many people as they departed from this world. Now, do you wanna know something about funerals? It's that feelings we experience within, no matter how prepared we would like to think of ourselves, we always, always have this shoulda, coulda, would have moments. Like, I could have picked up a phone and called him three days ago, but I didn't. I would have visited her had I known she was that close to death. Or I should have told him how much I loved him, or told him that I'm sorry. But of course, by the time we think about this, the person is already with the Father in heaven, and I'm sure you can relate to this, as we have lost a few more members this year than usual. I often look around the congregation from the pulpit and wonder who will still be with us here on earth in the next five years or even ten years. And I think in what ways we could share the love of Jesus together. All Saints Day, we remember all those saints that made personal impact in our faith. If you have worshipped with us, you may remember, right before I recite the Eucharistic prayer, I always say, let us give thanks to God for all the people and relationships that God has sent to us in our lives that have helped form us into the person we are today. As a priest who studied the legacy of the faithful people, not just ones appearing in the scripture, but also throughout in our church history. I am acutely aware how our belief systems and our way of being are hugely impacted by the people who lived before us. Not only do I remember them from the books or personal relationships, but I can just feel their spirits, the legacy, continue to live with us, in us, and through us. So when we say, therefore, joining with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, and when we partake the sacrament, we are essentially becoming one with them as the body of Christ. 
on this special day, All Saints Day, should not be just about our reminiscing of our sentimental past with those we loved and who have died. The best way to honor the dead, the way to keep the commandment to love God and his people is to love the living people in a way that we could have loved those who died before us. This love is not limited to those whom we already love, but must be shared with those whom we love the very least. As you know, this is the presidential election week. The tension among us continues to rise. The half of the country will be either happy or angry in the next few days and beyond. We anticipate all the mixed emotion. Going through this important event during the pandemic, suffering and death does not make it any easier either. Living under this level of tension, my friends even asked me whether I have second feeling about my naturalization two years ago. But I want you to hear this from me. I am honored, proud, and thankful for being part of this democracy. Historically, Episcopalians are no strangers to this level of divide and tension as we walk in the middle way of both Catholic and Protestant for the past 500 years. We come from the Christian tradition that appreciates the difference as a gift and not hindrance. As the Apostle Paul states, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We struggle at times because we care passionately about discerning God's will, what Jesus would want us to do. However, the agitation we feel now is a necessary step for change happening in our lives. Of all the 613 rules laid out in the Old Testament, when Jesus came, he summarized those rules into two commandments. One is to love God, and the second is to love God's people, not just friends, but also enemy. As long as we live here on earth, that is what we are committed to do. That is how we honor beloved saints. As we remember, honor, and give thanks to all those saints who passed before us. Instead of dwelling in the past and think of shoulda, coulda, woulda moments, let us firmly move forward as the agents of Christ's love. Let us make all the saints in heaven, Jesus, and God proud of our faithful, compassionate, loving acts. After all, as presiding Bishop Michael Curry always says, if it's not about love, it is not about Jesus. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.